The long-awaited East Coast plan is finally out. What's going to happen at East Coast? Let's dive straight into it. So today I want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, I want to talk about the East Coast plan that is being finally reviewed, right? In particular, the Bayshore, Bedok South area and what are the potential changes upcoming. Number two, we're going to look at the new land that's going to come up in Orchard. This is the first land in five years. And then number three, I want to once again share with you why I'm quite confident about Singapore property using a group of professional forecasters. Let's dive straight into it. This is the latest government land sale that was just announced yesterday, right? And this is the land plot at Orchard Boulevard. Now, for those of you who need a bit of orientation, you probably know about this place called Camden Medical, okay? And Camden Medical is actually right opposite uh, this new plot of land, right? Why is this new plot of land so exciting, right? It's because it is actually the first government land sale in five years for the whole Orchard area. And guess what? It is also right next to the MRT. So if you look at the overall map of the whole Orchard Belt, right? If I put Orchard Boulevard in the middle, here is the development. Now, how do we look at this space? Where is it optimal? I really like what I'm seeing here because firstly, you're not in the center of Orchard where it's all busy and bustling, right? So Orchard is over here, but you also get very close proximity to the Botanic Garden. So it's really quite an ideal situation here, okay? Now, how about pricing? Where does this area price at? There isn't a new launch for the last five years. The latest one was actually uh, Crusader Reserve, right? Crusader Reserve was in 2018. The land price back then was 2,377. It is very high. And on average, it's being sold for 3,400 to 3,600 PSF. Wow, okay? So this is back in 2018. Honestly, I feel that this might be a little bit overpriced. So what I did was actually I zoom out a little bit, right? So I included the River Valley area. And this is where we get to see other new launch project to have a better understanding what potentially this Orchard Boulevard land could be sold for, okay? So over here, this is the Orchard Boulevard land. Now there are a few new launches in this vicinity. Number one is actually Rivaria in 2018, okay, land price was 1,733. It was sold on average between 2,800 to 3,100, okay? The other one is the very famous Irwell Hill, very near Great World City over here, right? Irwell Hill was sold for slightly cheaper, 1,500. Therefore, the overall new launch was about 2,006 to 3,000 per square foot. There's one more new launch. It is not a 99-year lease. It's actually Avenir. Avenir was actually launched in 2020 as well. Right, the land price slightly higher, one thousand eight hundred, and on average sold for two thousand six to three thousand per square foot. Okay, so this is the comparison in terms of what is the land price to expect within the area, right, across ninety nine years and also freehold. So let's go back to Orchard Boulevard. If you see here, therefore, I would actually give this a bit more premium because it is actually closer to Orchard. It is not just at River Valley and it is at an area that is still relatively underdeveloped, okay? So I do expect Orchard Boulevard, the land price to go around 2,000 to 2,150. Therefore, it should be sold around 3,000 and above, okay? So quite a bit cheaper than Crusader Reserve, right? So therefore, for people who really like the Orchard area, this could be potentially something you want to look out for. But everything has a but, okay? But the thing is this, do take note, the whole Orchard area has been affected because the whole CCR area has experienced the fact that foreigners right now are no longer buying the CCR and Orchard Belt, right? Therefore, prices in CCR area has been coming down, right? So if you're buying Orchard area, do pay attention to this. Do not just jump in blindly, all right? Make sure you get the correct people to guide you. For example, uh, me, <laughs> Right now, let's go into the second point, which is this, okay? Now, guys, I don't know how many of you were actually paying attention during the last general election in Singapore in 2020. During then, our then Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Heng Sui Kiet, had a very famous speech about the East Coast plan, okay? And this East Coast plan is finally here. Now, what is the East Coast plan? It's actually not East Coast. <laughs> it's actually right now at the Bayshore MRT, okay? So this is the whole area that has been announced recently, uh, by our HDB during one of the events, okay? And this whole area, including Bayshore MRT and Bedok South MRT, 
will be redeveloped okay so this really come at the tail of recently when they increased the grp or sorry gpr from 3.5 to 4.2 right so likely this is going to be an integrated project and a tall integrated project and right now they are giving us even more details beyond this what else is happening okay so overall there's going to be about 10,000 residential units going to be built in the Bayshore area and they have earmarked 7,000 of them to be HDBs. As per what we have seen recently, you no longer see huge 5-room HDB in such prime areas. What we expect is actually at most a 4 bedder at this point in time. Next year, going into 2024, second half, we will do expect the first two BTO to be launched. However, due to the date of it, right, it is very likely this two new BTO is going to be a plus flat. If you forgot what plus flat is, let me just quickly go through with you, right? There are three categories and basically the plus flat has a much longer MOP of 10 years. There's also possibly a subsidies recovery up to 6%. That is under the prime category. So prime is the highest. Therefore, plus category might be a little bit lesser. Also, on top of that, plus flat will be subjected to income ceiling even for the resale, which is currently sitting at $14,000. On top of that, one other restriction is that plus flats are not allowed to be rented out fully. You can only rent out rooms. Okay, so with all this restriction, what I expect is really like the recent BTO exercise back in October where we saw an underwhelming response, right? Uh, especially for the prime flats. So I will expect a similar response for the plus flat as well, where initially people are quite unsure. They don't know whether this is something that they want and they will not just plow into the market. Now, all in all, this is for HDBs. How about private? Now, private, we're going to see the remaining to be private housing over 3,000 units. Okay. And on top of that, this will mean that five to six new launches will happen within just these two MRT stations. Okay. So I'm quite excited about this. I think this is going to really rejuvenate the whole Bedok South area, Bayshore area, which has been quite quiet because a lot of activities happen at the East Coast MRT side of the house. Now, once again, I want to highlight one important point for this announcement, right? Is that the government once again reiterate that right now they are already building about 80,000 more HDBs coming up and this is potentially growing to 110. Now, if I'm not wrong, this is the first time I'm seeing HDB going above the original target of 100k. So right now they are saying that they are confident to go up to 110k by 2025. So once again, guys, with the huge supply coming, I do not expect HDB prices to continue in current trajectory, right? It is of the government's narrative to really keep the price stable. In fact, they might want the price to come down even further. Okay, so if you're buying right now into resale HDB and you're paying sky high prices, just be very aware that you may or may not see the profit at the end of the day, okay? But HDB is not really for investment in this case. It's really more for a roof over your head. Now, the third thing I want to share with you guys is recently I found out that actually MAS has this thing called the Survey of Professional Forecasters, okay? So this is where they pull a group of economists and analysts, right, who closely monitor the Singapore economy and they ask for their response and what do they think is going to happen to the Singapore economy going forward, okay? And to my surprise, they are actually fairly accurate, okay? Now, you can see over here the quarterly GDP growth projection, right? The red line is the actual, while the X is actually their forecast. So you can see that they are pretty close. The only time that they are not able to predict very well is right during COVID recovery session, okay? Otherwise, you can see that really is to the dot. Uh. So I really like this, right? Because if a group of people can predict this with a significant track record. That means if I know what they're going to say next, that gives me a lot more confidence in my investment or in my home purchasing decision. Okay. Now, if you look at their mean, right, projection for GDP growth for the whole of this year, right, because we are already near the tail end of 2023. So right now they are going towards between 1 to 1.9% GDP growth, right? The majority of them are right here. Okay. So which is very decent. However, Guess what? Going into 2024, this group of forecasters, all right, actually predicts that the GDP will expand to 2.5%. And that's the majority of them. Okay, right? Between 2 to 2.9, right? So the average about 2.5. So this gives me a lot of confidence in property. Why? Because property prices right now, to make it sustainable, it has to be supported by a growing economy, growing wages. And how do we achieve that? And GDP is definitely one of the main drivers here. Now, last thing I want to look at is how do they even feel about property prices? So interestingly, they actually poll them about 
Private Residential Property Index, okay? And this is what we call the PPI, the very famous chart that I've shown multiple times. And I want you to see the very interesting uh, change, okay? For example, right, for the current survey, right, 50% of them actually think that property prices in 2023 will continue to be higher, okay? But that's not surprising. The more surprising thing is this. In 2024, Right? Although in 2023, 30% of them were bearish, that means thinking that the property price would drop, but in 2024, that number, right, dropped to only 11%. That means 80% or over 80% of them, right, believes that the property price will either be higher or stable. In fact, it is cut by half over here, right? So this really gives me another data point, another confidence level uh, to think about property going forward. Okay, so once again, for people who have questions about, hey, should I buy property? My my most common reply to my clients who ask me, other than searching the property for them, I always ask them is, if you need the property, then it really doesn't pay for you to wait because it only benefits you when you wait and the price drop. If the price doesn't drop, then there is a cost to you to waiting, right? Because property price will continue to go up in that sense. Okay, so that's all I want to share with you uh, in this update. Let me know if you have any comments. What do you think about the East Coast plan? And what do you think about the upcoming changes in the HDB landscape? All right, so let me know in the comments. And uh, But guys, once again, my consultation currently is full, right? Uh, so I will not be opening up uh, any more slots. When it's open, I will let you guys know again. Okay, so guys, if you like the content here, do like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.